Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Here we are, another day on the YouTube channel of Oliver Olmson. Mm. Giving it real, giving it facts. What's going on? We watched Hamilton last night. Alexander Hamilton. We did watch Hamilton last night. What did you think? I loved it. Yeah? Yeah, I really loved it. Different experience, I'm sure, from seeing it live. Yeah, there were times when I was like, I just wanted to see the full... I always feel this, though, whenever I'm watching shows that have been filmed. Yeah. There are times when I'm like, I just want to see the full stage yeah, so I can see yeah. everything that's going on. And especially because I've seen Hamilton as well, and you haven't. There were bits when I was like, oh, I really wish they just pull the camera back just a few inches, just that you got everything that was happening at that moment. Because yeah. I remember watching like the uh, Rewind and the first duel. Yeah. And just being completely blown away by the staging. choreography and the staging and the lighting and everything. And I was like, please just pull the camera back so you can see everything that's happening at mm. once. Because like, obviously it's lovely to have a close up of Angelica's face at that moment, but at the same time, there's so much going on stage in that rewind section where I'm like, yeah. I just want to see everything rewind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that um, at points. But I think sometimes it might be like a sort of way to hide mistakes as well. I was thinking that yeah. in my head, I was thinking, oh, maybe in the edit they thought, oh, that's not that clean. Mm. You know, that bit of choreography is not as clean as it should be. Yeah. You know, oh, that person just went a bit wrong. Yeah. So let's just zoom in into Lynn's face, you know. Yeah. Um, maybe that was some of them, but I do agree. I think every sort of, like, theatre I've seen like that. Is Part of it could also be like, oh, well, if you want the full experience, buy a ticket to come to the yeah. show. Well, we've got to that in a bit. But first, it was my first time seeing it. Yeah. And I thought it was amazing. I thought it was really good. I thought... It's very clever, very um, story driven, which I th was like the main sort of thing I took from it. Like, there was no like crazy flying props or set mm. or anything like that. It was just like simple props or no props. A bit like Lame Is, really, yeah. in the original Lame Is. Like, it was just, yeah, the ensemble just sort of told the story with the like lead actors. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I really liked it. I thought it was very clever. The, the choreography is amazing. The, uh, Slash for me, staging. the choreography is like the star of the show. Mm. I think the choreography is amazing and it's up there with the music as well. I mm. think they go hand in hand. Mm. The music's very good because it is so story driven as well. But then obviously he added like his genius to mm. it because he's obviously a genius and knows how to like stage and choreograph mm. a show. But also the thing about Hamilton is there's like no f like filler numbers, you know, when you get a musical and you're like, oh, that number really slows down the show because nothing yeah. actually happens in the show. It's just a number for the sake of having a number there because maybe half the cast have got to do a quick change now. Mm. There's like every number like drives the story forward. I'd love to be in like yeah. Lynn's brain. I'd love to like pick it, like, I'd love to pick his brain because having done a show from scratch, like, say, Back to the Future for me. Mm. I know what gets cut and I know what we did and how we tried to combat certain things. But I know he was there. He got cut from cats. Edgar! Yeah, so I know what the process is like. Mm. And I just it just feels like Hamilton is like a process like none other. Yeah. Um and I feel like when I was watching it I was thinking, how long were their, their tech and dress like runs and rehearsals mm. would have been on just on and the workshops like to create that. You can see moments where, like, say, his son comes back, you know, right near the end when he's, he's about to duel yeah. Aaron Burr, and his son has a little cameo, mm -hmm. and, he, and he goes, this is the place where my son died. And, like, just adding stuff, that wouldn't have been an original idea. That would have been like, oh, yeah, let's add him in. Like, yeah. And it would have just been layered, like, it's like such a layered piece. Mm -hmm. There's so many points where you're like, oh, my, like, he's in the back. Yeah. And it's telling the story because that's what happened in that one. And I don't know, I just feel like the process to make that would have been a long process because yeah. it's so layered. Uh, I can just imagine it being like really exciting. Mm -hmm. And also, like, like you said before, when you make a show, you trim a lot of fat. You're like, we need to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. This show's too long. That, that number doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I think he has done an album of like, always done yeah, like yeah. a mixtape of like songs that didn't make it or he's probably released some. But if that's like, the trim down version, like the streamline, yeah, the perfect version they could make. I'd love to know what else got cut. I just would have, would have loved to have been in the room where it happened. That's all I'm saying. Which is my favourite number. Yeah, it's very good. 
so I feel like just to end that Hamilton section, because mm. we briefly talked about is this now the death of like musicals? Yeah, because in another video we talked about that and people think that's like the scary, like sort of, yeah. that's a sort of scary outlook for producers. If they're like, yeah, if we film, you know, our version of Cats and put it on Netflix, maybe no one will come to the theatre. The West End. Yeah. But I can say safely, in my opinion, I would love to see it live. Oh now, God, yeah. That, that's not dampen the desire to see it live. You know, if I could get a ticket or someone was like, do you want to go to see Hamilton? You know, next week, whatever, say, this is obviously when lockdown doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, I'd be like, yeah, definitely yeah, would love, yeah. love to see it live. And with a new cast as well. I saw it in London with the original cast, I think. Yeah, yeah, it would have been. It was only open for a few months by the time I saw it. And I remember sitting through the first act and going, yeah, this is good. I'm really enjoying it. Like, maybe not completely on board with all the hype yet. And then it finished, I remember like crying for a half hour after it was done. Because I think the ending is like super emotional. Because just the idea of like, who's going to tell your story after you've gone, like that whole, whole idea really resonates with me. And that's like the entire, like that's like a running theme throughout the show, like who's going to tell your story. I loved seeing the original cast there, I thought that was really cool. Mm. Yeah, because uh, uh, and Lynn tweeted the other day, something like, it was 11 years since we performed at the White House, I think that's what he said. Mm. Um, when he did his like first like version of the opening, yeah. what would then be the opening of the musical? And he said, "I'm um, you know I'm writing a concept album about Alexander Hamilton," and everyone laughed. Mm. Um, which I get, like yeah, it's like me saying I'm going to write an album about John Major, who was a prime minister here, um, in like the 90s. Anyway, it got me thinking, like you know, when you make something so good, mm. or if you really want something, or you really put your mind to something, it takes time. It takes the hard work and perseverance and yeah. everything that goes with it. But like, it takes time. Like you have to like, just get, put your head down and work. Yeah. And like the greatest things don't just sort of happen overnight sort of thing. And it's proof that like really crazy ideas can be taken seriously and like re and be really successful. Yeah. Like everyone, like you said, everyone was laughing. It's just like, oh yeah, I've written a, a rap musical about Alexander Hamilton. Mm. And everyone was like, okay, like, because that's mad. That's mad. Yeah. Writing a, just writing a musical about Alexander Hamilton sounds a bit mad in the first place. Yeah. In the same way that everyone like laughed at Les Mis, which is about like the student revolution. Like who wants to go and see a musical? Like how could you even turn such a historical figure and a historical event that people see as like boring history oh. into a fun upbeat musical with like tap numbers? Like people laugh at that. But then to have the added element of having it a style of music that doesn't usually feature in musicals. Usually it is yeah. sort of like the Les Mis style of music or like contemporary musicals like Wicked. Yeah. Like, there's very few musicals that have the style of music that Hamilton have. So it is a completely bonkers idea, but then to do it with such conviction and with such talent and like compiling so many people who are successful in their own right, who are like perfect to match Lin-Manuel Miranda's vision, like you can make ridiculous ideas or ideas that sound ridiculous a massive success i guess he probably never thought it was ridiculous so that's the thing like, see i think he did because in that um that video that we watched recently of him doing at like the opening number of hamilton to everyone when everyone's laughing he's like hamming it up he's like alexander hamilton my oh, yeah. uh, like he's like hamming it up because i think he knows how ridiculous it sounds i don't think he thought it was a ridiculous idea because i he probably yeah. wouldn't have pursued it as hard as he did. But I think he knew how mad it sounded in the way that he was like, yeah, you know, I've written this musical about Alexander Hamilton. Like, he was very, like, hammy with it. Yeah. So I think he knew how it sounded. Yeah. I think he just, like, played the room. Like, you know, if you're like, I want to do this, and people are laughing. If then you, like, double down and go, no, no, this is really serious, then you sort of lose the crowd. Yeah. Because he did say, like, he said it's a perfect sort of, rap musical like it's a perfect story that mm. the guy's life is ridiculous from rags to riches mm. to sisters falling mm. in love with him and it's all about deceit and trying to get to the top and he, and also i think he's like a founding father that's not really like talked about mm. i think he's a genius but yeah yeah he's really clever what's he gonna do next so that's the thing like because i would have been the heights as well i think in the heights is amazing 
I don't know In the Heights as, as well. Oh, that's really Jeff, good. I, like the clips from that film. Obviously, like Lynn's done like more than just those two musicals, and, but be interested to see what he does next. What his next new like big sort of musical is, because yeah. I'm sure he's very like proactive, and it seems like he, he enjoys doing it. What I do like though about Lynn, I say Lynn like I know him, but I don't at all. Um, is that he's quite loyal with yeah. his actors and actresses and all that. Like he sort of seems to hire people who he's like worked with before, mm -hmm. which I think is really nice. I think it maybe it's that sort of getting on board with his idea and his. Mm. You don't have to convince someone that it's going to work in rehearsals. You know, some people might be like, "Oh God, this is a bit shit." Whatever. Yeah. Or about a founding father. Oh. But like, if he's there with his friends or people he's worked with before, mm. it's like, I know what they bring to the table, and I know that they know that I, mm. I know what I'm doing. You know, yeah. like, um, so it's nice to see that if you like look through his like body of work, you're like, oh, the same people pop up. Again. Like, yeah. I think, I think again, I'm really like not that I'm a research guy, so I'm just guessing really, but I'm pretty sure the guy who plays George Washington was in In the Heights. Right. And I think there's quite a lot of crossovers yeah. from like his first like big Broadway musical. You see that a lot though with producers, when producers find actors who are talented and can get, like they're reliable, they can mm. get the job done, they'll cast them in various different productions. What's really good about Hamilton mm. as well, um, I don't know how many people know about like workshops and like labs and stuff. Yeah. So basically what happened with Hamilton, and I think this is news, you can Google it, it'll be out there somewhere. Mm. So I'm going to briefly tell you, and hopefully not shoot myself in the foot, but this is what my understanding was, is that in America, yeah, like their equity, yeah, when you do, when you create a musical, if you do like a workshop for a musical, and then it's hugely successful, it goes huge, you get as an artist and being there at the start and creating that musical and being part of the, like, the process, you get X amount of profit. And sometimes when it's like a mega, mega, mega silly hit, like Hamilton, and I can say like Book of Mormon, because I've got, actually got some friends who did the workshops yeah. of Book of Mormon, every month or every year, depending, you get X amount in your bank. Like you get some money to go, hey, listen, like you helped us out. You were there at the beginning. You were there, you were there at the beginning, like you were helpful. Like, thank you. Here's X amount, all depending on profit and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Um, but, so that's like a workshop, yeah? And when they did Hamilton, they did something called the lab, which is, is basically a workshop. When you do a workshop, your wage, your like weekly wage is lower. However, they're like, if this makes a profit, you're all you're gonna, in. you're all yeah. gonna ka-ching, which sounds amazing, but sometimes like the amount of workshops actors do, sometimes you're like, just give me the better wage a week. because. Yeah this might flop, or this might not make any profit. This might not even make, do one professional show. Yeah. That happens with some workshops and some like musicals. Yeah. They just never see the light of day. And um, so Hamilton did a lab. So all of them got paid weekly or whatever it was, but at a higher rate. Which um, meant they wouldn't get the... Yeah, which meant they wouldn't get like the, the, um, the royalties later on, yeah. the, the, the bonuses of the profit. But this is all pre-Hamilton, like, it's massive success, so it could have bombed. Yeah. Yeah, so no one had a problem with that, because they were yeah. like, well, this might not go anywhere, so... Yeah, it's like, mm, well, I'm getting more money so I can pay my rent, you know? Yeah. Great. However, it went huge, and just went, like, blew all, like, the records, as we know. Yeah. As we know. Um, so then what happened then is that Lynn being in the show, and probably being one of the producers, and being, like, the creator, was in the show and like it sucked for the rest of the cast I guess because they're thinking shit like we, we're doing this lab this this production's making millions and millions of pounds mm -hmm. there's now a national tour there's there's opening in the West End like you know all that sort of money that's being made around the world in the Hamilton bubble mm -hmm. we're not getting any of it because we did a, did a lab so what Lynn did I believe this is right is was like right okay like I'm gonna give you the percentage if, if it was a workshop, mm. so he changed it. So all the original cast got their X amount, which is amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. I don't know the numbers. I don't know how much certain people get in their bank a week mm. or a month from something they did years ago. But I did have a friend in Mormon who was in the original cast of Mormon and that was a workshop. So he then got like money yeah. every month. And 
it helps him out. Let's just say that much. It helps him out. So it's amazing for all those like, original like dancers and mm. um, singers or whatever, all those performers in the original cast of a musical, like as in the workshops, they're getting something, which is amazing because you do like put a bit of your soul. You do yeah. put a bit of you into a show when you're creating it and you do help out when you can. And you might add a line. Mm. You might like say something funny and they go, oh my God, that's genius, keep it in. Mm. And it's there for the rest of its life. Um, so it is nice to be given that sort of like financial reward. Mm. And quickly on that as well, and this is why, because of our equity and our rules here in the UK, this is why a lot of producers and people start new musicals here because we don't have those rules in place no. where you get X amount if it's a massive hit. So people come over, it's just cheaper, basically. Our union isn't as strong here. No, it's just cheaper. So you can hire actors here, start up a show and go, okay, we're taking it to Broadway and bye, thank you. And they go. And that's what happens. And it's, I mean, that's the rules. They're not breaking any rules. So yeah. we can't be angry at them. Yeah, don't hate the player. Yeah, the game. we can't be like angry at producers slash like these creators. And at the end of the day, they're hiring people in the UK as well. So, swings and roundabouts. Yeah. But that's a little story about Hamilton, and I'm pretty sure it's true. Um, but it'd be nice to see if they got something from the actual um, Disney Plus as well. Mm. Hopefully, they all got some a bit, either a buyout, like a nice. I think so. I think lump sum, because like, that would be nice for the the uh, artists, especially mm. in these times as well. Oh, Imagine doing a musical because I think it was shot in 2016, and then mm. getting a call from your agent going, "Oh yeah, Hamilton's been sold to Disney Plus." Here's your cut. Here's yeah. your cut. Oh, amazing. That'd be lovely. I think it's time, the elephant in the room, the spitting elephant in the room. Yeah. Jonathan Groff is spit. He's a dribbler. He is a big spitter, mm. which is fine, I guess, as long as you're not playing opposite him. <laughs> well, I think like when you're sat in an audience and you're far away, you can't see that, but then suddenly when the camera's like here, mm. you can see just how much dribble there is. Well, I watched him in a play, like, years ago, at the Noel Coward, and I can't remember what it was called, I think it was called Death Trap, or Death Something, mm. and it was like a three-hander, I think it was like three people in it, and he was in it, and I got a cheap ticket, and I was a fan of Jonathan Groff, because he was like, spring awakening, and all mm. that sort of stuff, and I thought he was really cool. Yeah. And this is like pre, pre-everything really, yeah. pre-Frozen, pre-like Hamilton, pre-loads. Um, and I was like, oh, I've got to see Jonathan Groff, like, he's amazing. And he spat loads, like he was like that. But I didn't realise it, I sort of forgot. And then I watched him last night and I was like, ah oh, yeah, he does spit a lot. There are just some actors who do. Yeah. I've never been on the receiving end of someone's, I've, like, I've been spat at, but by accident. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's that thing where you spit at someone, like, not on purpose, but like you're speaking and you see like the spit go whoop and like land on the head. And then your eyes go like, yeah, you're like, oh god. And then sorry. their eyes got big as well because you've both seen it happen. You're like, oh god, you just spat on my face. <laughs> but yeah, he spits a lot. Mm. Great part though. Really cushy track, that. That's a part, and I only can speak for myself, that when I'm like, yeah, that's, that'd be a really cushy year. Because mm. I like to be busy in shows. I like to like... Yeah, I do. Be, I don't really like sitting down a lot or like not being like, you know, having like four hours off and going, yeah. oh god, let's go and do my song. Because I feel that's when you mess up a lot as mm. well. But, I mean, I mean, if it got offered to me like today, I'd be like, yes, please. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd definitely do it. But it's a part for me, I'm thinking, when I'm a bit older. You've got kids to look after. Yeah, or, and you're strolling yeah. and go, ah, okay, nine minutes, whatever it is. And yeah, and it's a great part. Because if it's done well as you well. You the show with it. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah, really fun. Well, that was that. It wasn't meant to be a Hamilton video, but it sort of ended up being a Hamilton video. Favourite part from last night? Favourite moment? Um, Run Where It Happens is my favourite number. Mm. I love the jewels. Mm. Where, like, where I love that choreography so much. I think that's like yeah. really super clever. I just love Philippa Sue. I just think she's... Yeah, she's ridiculous. Just, I don't, I just don't, I just don't understand. Like, she looks like she's not singing when she is, if mm. that makes sense. Like, it, it, it's almost, it's like she's speaking. Yeah. And I just don't understand how it looks surfaceless. Yeah. There's one moment that just breaks your heart. Yeah. Breaks your heart and she's just, I think, yeah, she's ridiculous. Yeah. I think my favourite, like, sort of moment, because I listened to the cast album quite a lot, so I knew, like, most of the songs, or all of the songs, really. 
but it was really good to see satisfied. I was really happy mm. to see that because I sort of visualised how it was done. And it sort of was a bit better than I visualised. Mm. Just I loved, I loved the idea. That was just the moment in the filming where I was like, oh my god, please pull the camera back, please pull the yeah. camera back. Because I remember watching that and my mind being blown. Mm. Like watching it in the theatre. Yeah. I mean like, oh my god, what's happening? What's happening? Mm. So I just wish there was just more... Yeah. distance from the camera at that point because I was like I just want you to see like the full stage and everything that's yeah. happening right now. I loved Aaron Burr as well. <clears throat> yeah. He was amazing. We were talking about the Tonys last night because it got nominated for uh, 11. I don't know. It might have won 11. Don't at me. Um, it won a lot of Tonys. It won a lot of Tonys. For best actor, Lynn and Leslie were like both nominated and the guy playing Aaron Burr, Leslie, like won. And Lynn didn't win, obviously. But we were talking, saying like, well, he won anyway. Like, he won best musical, like best score, mm. like best uh, like choreography. Even though that's not his department, mm. but it's like his show. Like, he, he helped create it. Uh, Davy Diggs, who played um, um, Thomas Jeff Jefferson, mm. he won a Tony. The the lady playing uh, Angelica Renee, she won. Like, he won. Mm. He didn't win his little personal award, but he's probably thinking, I don't care about it that. Like, my team's won. It's, my, his, yeah. it's his show. Like, no yeah. matter who wins, it's a win for him. So he must have been so, like, happy that night. He must have been absolutely blown away. That's it. The Hamilton chat is over. Let us know what you thought of it. And if you liked it or not, I guess some people might have not enjoyed it. Right, everyone. It's time to go. Thanks for popping by. Be safe out there. Don't. Don't. Forget to smile. Bye bye everyone!